it's winter, which means that it gets dark early. And that makes me sad and it makes it harder for you to go out and play. But it does mean that it's fantastic for a stargazing challenge, which is great for a rocket man like me. This is one of my favourite objects in the Wardlaw Museum. It's a globe. But where are the countries? Why can't you see the sea? It's because this globe is a map of space. It shows the stars and the constellations. The constellations are the pictures that we make by drawing lines between the stars. Globes are maps that have been made 3D and round. So this is basically a map of the night sky. And people have been making maps of the night sky for centuries. So for today's challenge, I'd like you to make use of the dark evenings to make your very own map of the night sky. Wait for a clear night, put on something warm, get a piece of paper and a pencil, sit on your doorstep and draw the stars as you see them. And if you do spot any constellations, you can draw lines between the stars and make them into pictures like on our celestial globe. Of course, it's not just stars that you'll find in space. This is another map of space called an orrery. It's a model showing the different planets and their orbits. An orbit is the path a planet takes as it goes round and round the sun. Sometimes you can see planets in the night sky as well. They usually look like stars, but might be a bit brighter or a different colour. You can use a great website called Stellarium to show you what the night sky looks like where you are. It'll help you know which stars you can see and if there are any planets you could spot. It'll also draw lines and pictures around the constellations so you can see those too. This is what you could see on the night I made this video. It even showed me where I might see the International Space Station, although I couldn't find it in the sky. If you see a star that's moving, it might be a shooting star, a meteorite like a piece of dust that's burning up as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. If you see a star that's moving and flashing, it's probably an aeroplane. This is the map of the night sky that I made. It's not very good, is it? But you can see that Stellarium helped me to label the things that I saw. Look, I even saw Mars. Now I'm going to try something different. I'm going to make a massive map of our solar system to give you an idea of just how ginormous our solar system really is. This might be something you could try too. In my map, for every one million miles between the planets, I'm going to use one centimetre. I'm going to use this lamp post as the sun and various balls I have at home as the different planets. Now this means that the size of the planets isn't to scale, it's just the distances. Now, in my map, all the planets will be in a straight line, but this never happens in real life. Remember, the planets usually go round and round the sun in an orbit. So let's have a go. And remember, in my map, one centimetre equals a million miles in real life. So there you go, the universe really is ginormous. That was my map, but what about your map? To help you with your map of the night sky, I asked some expert astronomers from the University of St Andrews to give you their top tips for stargazing. <laughs> 
So my top tip for stargazing is to use apps like this on your phone and will also work on any tablet. So this is an app called Stellarium. It's basically a, a map of the stars and a sky map. And what's really useful about this is when you go outside, you can point your phone at the stars in the sky and it will move with it and show you what you're looking at. And it's a really good way to get started making your map of the stars. So this is called Stellarium, but if you go to any app store and put in star map, there'll be loads of free apps that are really good. After sunset in January, keep the sunset at your right shoulder and look out for bright red marks and the V of Taurus the Bull and the three stars of the belt of Orion the Hunter. That's a good start. The third brightest object in the sky after the sun and the moon is the planet Venus. You can see it best near sunrise or sunset because since Venus orbits closer to the sun than the Earth does, it's never very far from the sun in our sky. Because of this, it's historically been called the evening star or the morning star, even though it's actually a planet. Now once you've made your map, hang on to it. If you go out again much later at night, or in a few weeks time, you'll see that the stars have moved. Now obviously, they've not really moved, the Earth has just got a little bit more around its orbit, and that means that the stars look like they're in a different place. Take a look and see how the sky has changed. And once you've made your map, you can send it to us by emailing museumlearning at st-andrews.ac.uk and we'll show some of them on the next episode. In the meantime, happy stargazing. Bye bye.